Welcome, everybody, to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today Natasha Optehip. She is from Germany, but is currently residing in Australia. She has a company called Bliss Utility, Bliss Unity, I guess. sorry. And she works with coaches to get results. She coaches for results. She works with seven different countries um, and has really helped people build their businesses. So Natasha, if you would start, please, by telling our audience how you got into what you're doing, what your background is, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, well, for me, I, you know, when you have those things that you always knew you wanted to be doing, so there are like some kind of agreements you've done, you've made with yourself. And one of my agreements I had with myself was always, I always wanted to do something I absolutely love. However, in the process of getting there, it took actually a little bit of time. And it wasn't until I found myself in actually my very first personal development seminar when I just moved to Australia. And in that seminar, I found myself writing down my values. And that was an exercise that actually helped me get really clear about what I actually want to be doing. So in order to make my life align to my values so that I know that I'm actually on track. And in this particular exercise, I've realized that personal development is something I absolutely love. However, at that point, I didn't even know that there is something called like as a coach, like a career or as a coach, you could actually pursue uh, where you can pretty much make personal development your full-time job. So in that moment, once I discovered coaching, I knew from the moment on, like that's exactly what I wanted to be doing. And then during that time, I've, before that, I also studied business and marketing. And the beauty of coaching is that it allows you to combine your passions. So for me, it was quite interesting because I was, the second thing I always knew I wanted to be doing was building an online business. So, which allows me to live in Australia, but also go to Germany whenever I wanted, don't need to ask for, you know, for a boss in order to leave or have a holiday or have limited time. So the whole freedom and working for myself was always something there. So that was another thing I was really passionate about, about the whole marketing and online side and how to build online businesses. And then the combination of the coaching with online marketing was pretty much like how I came into Bliss Unity and how I started my business. So Natasha, you talk about how you can have business and make money in the first 30 days. And so talk a little bit about that because that's always the challenge everybody has. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you go to something new, you go to something different. How do you really make money and sustain yourself? So how do you teach that and coach that? Yeah, for sure. So during this time, I when I started out as a coach, I actually struggled quite a lot to get clients. And I was constantly looking for the so-called magic pill. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're any familiar with that. But for some reason, we kind of feel there's something outside of ourselves out there. And if we, like those people who are successful, they just found it, right? So you try to get your hands around that. Um, but what I discovered is that there is actually not necessarily something outside of yourself, but it's more about what's already inside of you and getting that out. So I know that because I was in the same situation that one of the struggles is getting clients in general, but also for coaches in order to get that quite fast in order to build up their belief. Because the longer you struggle to not sign clients, the more you build up that belief that signing clients is hard. So I built it up a really intense, like a really specific process. It, I call it actually the bliss method, which allows people to get clients fast, but also following specific steps because one of the online out um, online advices I got a little bit at the beginning was always when I, you know when you just jump on Google and you type in how do I get clients how do I co get coaching clients and it was pretty much what I did on a daily basis and I was always hoping to find like the magic secret and maybe this time Google shows me something else um, it wasn't really that case <laughs> it wasn't really like being in the process but the biggest 
advice like people were always giving was simply just show up, right? Like just create content. And it just didn't make sense for me. I'm quite a logical person. So for me, it has to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, I don't believe in it. And therefore I end up not doing it. So just putting some kind of content out there for a period of time. And then I think, okay, now I get clients. There was, there were too many gaps in between. And I'm a very like logical person, but also very detailed orientated. So then there's pretty much a wide variety on terms of what kind of content to provide. So that led me diving deeper into learning way more about content marketing, about copywriting, and also a lot about sales psychology, because all those things combined allowed me to really get an understanding of what helps people actually to make a buying decision. So the overarching thing, what we want to look into when we put ourselves out there in our marketing process is that we want to look at a marketing campaign that changes behavior. And when we have that on the top four on our mind and always thinking about that, we are not ending up posting content just for the sake of posting content, right? Because so many times we just think about exposure, exposure, visibility, just show up, which is great in order to overcome some kind of beliefs, you know, when people are starting out and are a little bit nervous, which is fine. However, exposure does not equal sales. So there's more to it. And the bliss method I am working with pretty much starts the furry, um, the first pillar is the booked out identity. So I'd like to come back onto that a little bit later because that really goes into the subconscious mind. Now you utilize that, but that pretty much sets us the foundation. So the but first one, the first one is book out. Booked out identity. Exactly, your booked out identity. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit later. I'm just going to okay. finish up with the strategical, the strategical part because I think that's what a lot of people really um, want to hear, right? Um, so that's the first pillar. The second pillar is your, your loyal dream client. So you might have heard it as well, but everyone in online business or marketing always, always, always talks about know your ideal customer or your ideal client. And it's really about the understanding of who your, I call them dream clients, um, because dream clients are something, you know, you want to do something you love, then you want to work with people who are dream clients. Um, So that is quite important in order to understand like who they really are, but not necessarily the old school module in terms of the 35 to 55 years old and living in this area, right? We want we want to go deeper. We want to talk about their fears, about their frustrations, and about about their wants and their desires. So we want to understand the psychology of how they think. And once we have that in place and understanding the actual problem people are struggling with, then we can move into the next pillar, which is your irresistible offer. Your irresistible offer is pretty much like a no-brain offer in order to package something up that almost like eradicates this one question in the world. So when you think about your dream clients, most of them, they have a question that's bothering them. The question why? Because they have a problem. For my audience, my dream clients, the question they're having is, how do I get coaching clients? So my entire program and process and everything I do is everything is dedicated in order to erase that question for coaches. So that gives me the overarching outline in order to know what I need to be focusing on and then putting up a specific signature system that allows my clients to get the results in a systematic way. Because when you have a systematic way, a system you can trust where you know it delivers results, then you can almost guarantee your coaching. And it also helps, especially for coaches who are just starting out, to outsource their confidence. Because so many times I hear it over and over again when coaches are just starting out, they just kind of have a lot of skill and they're just getting the hang of it and charging money for it. It's, it's quite a big hurdle. So by actually developing their own signature system and where they can see when their clients are following the process, they will get results. So it's not so much about them as a person, right? If I am good enough, will I, will people pay me? But it's more about, hey, can I solve that problem? 
because the beliefs is like a really big one um, we're constantly always working with. So that helps people to outsource that confidence. And the next one is the system for consistent clients. So it's a specific system I work on, which is not just one step in terms of putting content out there, but it's actually five steps where you're really focusing on, on building up the bias journey from getting someone to know you in order to like you, educate them, creating some kind of impact in their life, and then always inviting them on a sales conversation, like a discovery call or like some kind of call. But that's pretty much the main focus in your marketing. Because from that conversation, then they have the chance to buy your product. And that's what I see um, a lot of people are doing when they're utilizing social media or they're not really utilizing social media in an effective way. And the number one rule I always say is that give publicly and sell privately. Because so many people are afraid of on, on selling on social media or feeling we because social media is like full of a lot of people who don't know you and some people might know you right so you don't want to come across and just putting up your program straight up there because it also does really sell so you have to build some trust you have to build a relationship which is quite important in order to get those people onto your phone call so the main focus and the number one like number we pretty much measure is about getting discovery calls booked. And my clients are booking actually like three to five discovery calls every single week. By having that system in process, now they're actually feeling quite equipped in order to sign clients. Because when you have like three to five, let's say four calls a week, and even if you convert only, I don't know, like 50% or so, so th that's already two clients a week. Right. And that is the, the, oh, those numbers and the consistency helps coaches to build up their confidence, to get fully booked fast and really start their career off as a fully booked coach. And the um, fifth pillar is the soulful sales. So that's pretty much where we have the sales conversation. But having the conversations in a specific structure and sequence um, that allows people to make a buying decision. Like really allows, because that's the main focus for them in order to commit to their future version of themselves. So in that all together is pretty much the bliss method and how I help my clients sign clients pretty fast within 30 days in order to have that system then in place and then be able to get fully booked. So what I'm hearing you say is there's a sequential process, one builds on the other, and you can't leapfrog over a step. Am I right in understanding that? Yes, exactly. So it's quite important in order to know who your dream client is before you can build up your irresistible offer, because otherwise you're not creating something that the market doesn't really want. And I also have a specific process in place where I help my people to validate their offer. Um, like start talking to people as soon as possible in order to validate, hey, what I actually offer is exactly my, what my audience really needs or it maybe needs some refinement. Because when you have a really great offer, the whole marketing process is so much easier as well. So it, your offer you get from the audience itself, because there's a, you see a lot of different kinds of offers on the internet, Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the offer, so do you, when you do an offer, do you do stack offers or how do you go about doing that? Where it's like, so, buy this and then this and then this and then this and then here's your bonus and then this. Yeah, that's such a good question. And I'm actually totally against that. I just focus on one really good offer because it's about the signature system you impl implement into that offer and then you start out get people one-on-one -on -one into it one-on-one -on -one coaching is such a great way in order to get clients super fast because you don't need to have a great bigger launch you can sign clients consistently on a continuously basis but it also allows you to get paid for your market research because you're like one-on-one -on -one sessions are the best way to really understand your audience because your clients you're actually clients who are paying you 
Those are your dream clients. So you want to get more information about them and understanding that, okay, now I'm going to build this best program or process for them. And on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you have so much space in order to adjust and add it a little bit out and really move from session to session in order to see, okay, what works the best. And once you have that all and like be fully booked within your one-on-one -on -one business, then you can take the same system and package that into a group program. But it's really about like focus on this big problem, focus on this one problem in order to solve and, on, and instead of having so many offers, like so many different offers. Because the thing is, it takes pretty much the same time and effort and energy in order to sell, Frank Kern actually said it, in order to sell um, a $10 product or a $10,000 product. Well, the thing is, it still requires, and when you see it maybe online, when you go on um, Facebook and you go on a Facebook ad and there's this tripwire, right? Like an offer that is super cheap for like, I don't know, like 20 bucks or so. And you can see how long the page is, how long the sales page actually is for even a $20 product. It's pretty much the same length as a normal like mastermind or a one-on-one -on -one coaching. So Therefore, in order to get, get fully booked fast, right? Like that's what my clients want. That's what you want as a coach. You want to do what you love full time so you can quit your job and do, and do that. So it's about finding the fastest place first. And that is getting fully booked within your one-on-one. -on -one. You don't even need a website or even a sales page at that point because you're focusing on human relationships. And those human relationships you build from the social media primarily and the conversations you begin to create there. Exactly, yeah. So you're focusing on getting, like building up your audience. I have this um, magnetic marketing strategy and the magnetic marketing strategy is about three components. The first component is your audience attraction, meaning you have to have specific steps in place in order to consistently grow your audience, right? When you think about the a funnel system, not necessarily in a technology way, but more as a metaphor, as an analogy, right? When you see the, the funnel, you always want to make sure that you're pouring new people on top of the funnel. So instead of just posting your content out there and just hoping people will find you, you want to go out, you want to locate your dream clients and then target them specifically who they are so you get in front of them and start grabbing their attention. And when you do this in a consistent way, you always know that you're getting in front of new people. That's the first step from the marketing strategy. The second so step is just then a moment. That, that implies advertising then, does it? Well, not necessarily because I teach my clients how to do this organically, meaning without paying ads. So social media is such a great platform. We can use Facebook, for example. Facebook has a tool which allows you to get in front of your dream clients because someone else already created that audience. So there are so many different Facebook groups where it's where pretty much piled up your dream clients. So it's pretty much just then get in front of them and start a conversation with them, Be, grab their attention, get in front of them. So kind of that they're, that you're locking them and bring them into your world. On Instagram, you can do this actively as well in order by looking for hashtags or going into competitors profiles and seeing their photos, like the people who are commenting and then just get in front of them, get in front of their profile and start that relationship, right? They just need to see you. And when they come back to you on your profile, so that's like a whole nother thing um, to really set up your social media profile in a magnetizing way. So once your dream clients are jumping on your profile, that they feel like, oh, I want to learn more, right? You want to build up that curiosity and also their desire. So that's the whole attraction method, right? You want to attract them to you um, by setting up your social media profile, but also focusing on specific psychology triggers that triggers people in order to stay on your page, so what are those psychological triggers that you set up? That's, that's great. <laughs> they're, they're actually quite a lot. One of them, which a lot of people are always struggling with when they're using organic marketing, is the authority method. Because 
so many times people are falling into the friend zone on social media, right? So you want to make sure that you're not in the friend zone and that people seeing you as the authority, as someone that doesn't mean that you need to be featured in Forbes or have to have a 500 fortune company. The authority here means that you know what you're talking about and that you're an expert, that they can trust you and your opinion. So one of the great ways in order to do that is also by dedicating yourself to solving your dream client's problem, right? The question I said before, like the driving question that drives your program to actually exist, having that in the front row on your social media so that your dream clients see exactly, oh my God, you're pretty much dedicated your life or business in order to solve my biggest problem. So how that looks like on, um, on Facebook or on Instagram, it always allows you the specific different method, but let's take Instagram, for example, you have your bio and you can take that bio and you can have your magnetizing marketing message, I like to call it, which pretty much magnetizes those dream clients in, um, in order to help to help give them the idea that you are an authority and you know what you're talking about. And that's exactly what they want. So for me, I, I, it says that I help coaches get consistent clients by utilizing their subconscious mind. So it creates hey, I want to get consistent clients, right? That's a big problem of my, of my dream audience. But also it builds some kind of curiosity with this unique selling point by where I focus on the subconscious mind as well. So that is one of the um, psychology, um, psychology triggers. Obviously, they're, they're way more, and there's, there's always so much more about it, but that already gives you some kind of understanding of how to attract that audience. Tell me, how do you use the subconscious mind? Because there's many people who talk about the neuroscience, the brain, uh, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind. So how do you use the subconscious mind to attract clients? Yes, and I use the subconscious and the unconscious mind pretty much interfairly, so they kind of are the same and in this purpose for, um, in this example here so as i said before the fully booked identity or the booked out identity is my very first pillar so what i start out first is actually working on my client's own subconscious mind and that actually the reason why i'm doing this is because when I was so focusing on all the marketing strategies, but I still haven't gotten the results, I was really frustrated because I was still thinking about, oh my God, I know already so much about marketing and I've kept learning, but I always had this feeling of not enough or there's something missing. And it led me to working with my private coach. He is a mindset coach and he works with Bob Proctor in this very intense mindset program. It was a six month program, which was pretty intense, like morning and evening, where I needed to have like specific action steps and, and rewire pretty much my subconscious. So what it allowed me was really to change my mind in order to be that person I wanted to be. So the whole reason around is, is that most of the time, what we're always doing is we're working on a module which is backwards. We're trying to find, um, we have a look at what we have, like in terms of, okay, how many clients do you have? How much money do you have? That lets us, like our circumstances, right? Our environment. That lets us then dictate what we do. Okay, so I not ha I'm not having enough clients, so I have to do more marketing in order to be successful. But we're actually getting it backwards because we're always working in life in general works always from the be, do, have module because we're always doing who we are or what we are. So the best example I can give you is for people who are overweight and that's their way of being. However, it's their subconscious identity and it's the subconscious identity because they're not going around and saying, hey, I'm this overweight person, right? It's like, in, it's, it's silent in their mind, in the back of their mind, it's always there, but that's how they identify within themselves, right? Through pros, like programming when they were a child, whatever events, like, it doesn't really matter where it came from. However, it's still programmed and that's how they identify with it. And who, however, who you are being, that's what you are doing. So then when they say, okay, well, I want to lose weight, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this diet. I'm going to um, go to, to go to the gym and start working out. And that might be doing that for a little time. However, they're using willpower because it's not in alignment to their identity, to their self-image, like how they see themselves. And they're struggling a lot because it's so far from who they are being. So it's this, and there's always a time limit uh, on it, right? Like they have not having, it's not a lifestyle change of who they are being. It's it's just this, okay, I'm going to do this till whatever for a couple of weeks or so. And they might get results, right? Because we do get the results from taking the action. However, we're only focusing on the symptoms and not on the cause. Because sooner or later, you probably know as well that um, from, you know, you just see it online that people are going back and actually gaining the weight and even more than before because they're going back to that identity. So they can't have it in a sustainable way. When we apply that into, into business, and that was actually one of my stories, when I was really focusing on doing so much and was only focusing on the marketing aspect. But in my mind, I was this struggling coach because I was for so many years. It was such an identity. So then I put in the places and I started signing um, lots of clients and I made like $10,000, my first $10,000. It's like, oh my God, that's so much money. That's like amazing. And I felt so weird. <laughs> I, I remember I was talking to one of my friends and I said, it feels so weird not to struggle about money. And it was it was quite bizarre because back at that day, I, I had no idea what actually was going on. But sooner or later, I fall back into the trap of being a struggling coach. And the thing was not because that's what I wanted, but it was because that's who I was being. That's how I was identifying myself with. And your identity is something in your subconscious mind. It's really programmed and it's really connected to safety. And your brain is designed to keep you safe. So it will do whatever it can in order to keep you in that identity. And without changing and reprogramming that identity, which happens with a lot of um, repetition and intense emotions in order to really get into that um, fully booked version, so to speak, it, it falls back because it wants back to the, it wants back to being safe and being where it wants to be. Maxwell Maltz, the author of Psycho-Cybernetics, he always says that self-image actually sets the boundaries for accomplishment because you can never outperform your subconscious identity. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. So I can see when people are struggling, because you can see it, whatever actions they're doing, or whatever, however, what kind of results they're having, it's always the reflection of who you are being on the inside. So by only focusing on changing the outside, you're only changing the symptom, symptoms, but not the cause. So that's why I focus so much on the subconscious mind. Fascinating. You know what, Natasha, our time has gone very, very quickly. And so things that we haven't discussed that are very important for our audience to know that you would like to share before we conclude? Yeah, for sure. I think for me, when I got into the study of understanding my own mind and changing that around and being in that version and being in that fully booked version, it also allowed me by understanding so much of the mind also allowed me that to impl implement that into the marketing process. Because when we think about, we want to focus on our subconscious mind in order to change our actions and therefore getting the results. Well, how about we changing the subconscious mind of our audience in order to get them to take the action to work with us? So that's where I focus a lot on the marketing, really focusing on the right brain side where the subconscious mind is seated and focusing on the, the safety part, the emotional part, and putting that create a lot of focus. And that's pretty much when you understand sales psychology, that you have a little bit more certainty in your marketing process, because marketing is always about testing, right? But when you understand the specific principles of the subconscious mind, how it actually works, what needs to be happening, you can then apply that into your marketing process, into your content, right? So you know that your content is not there, hey, here's what I do, but it actually creates impact in your audience. Wow. 
You know what? I, I agree with you. The, the subconscious, the unconscious mind is huge and so much um, healing and um, shifting can happen if we simply take a look at that. And, and it really creates new neural pathways. And it's, I think, something that is so terribly misunderstood or not understood at all. So, Natasha, thank you so much for your thoughts. And um, for those of you who would like to get in contact with Natasha, we will have information about her in the show notes. So you are welcome to go ahead and connect with her. Or if you need help, just simply let us know. We'll be glad to do that for you. Natasha, thank you very much for being with us on building our My Legacy podcast today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button above. Leave comments. We'd love to hear what you think. And visit our other social media links as well. Thanks much.